Hi everyone, my name is Emmy and I work for eLife. Um, today I'm very excited to be uh, presenting at this global BCC and sharing with you some of the latest work of a project that we've been working on for the past two years or so. eLife, for those of you who don't know, we are a nonprofit organization. Our mission is to accelerate scientific discovery by operating a platform that encourages and promotes uh, the most responsible research behaviors. So uh, we're probably best known for uh, running and operating a fully open access online journal uh, in the life sciences, but actually, we also uh, invest a lot of effort and do a lot of work in uh, technological development in improving the ways that research is shared, consumed, discovered and evaluated. This, this particular part of uh, regarding uh, technological innovation is done by the Innovation Initiative. The mission of this initiative is to drive open innovation for open science. So here we're specifically talking about supporting the development of open source tools and projects and working with and supporting the community around open source for open science. The executable research article project that I'm hoping to introduce here is something that we've been working on since 2017. It is uh, being developed in collaboration with Stencilla and Substance. Um, and it used to be known as the reproducible document stack project. And so our motivation really stems from the fact that while code and data are increasingly important in research, they're often left out of the main narrative of research paper. This negatively impacts the reproducibility and reusability of the research that is published. So our vision for a uh, executable research article is then one that encapsulates usable code and data within the flow of a manuscript. We want to deliver progressive enhancement from static research articles to interaction uh, with full data and code. We want uh, this error tool stack to be feature proof, uh, language agnostic, we want it to be easily accessible for everyone and finally the ultimate goal, I think, is to really encourage the reuse of published research and code and data included. So um, these are all words. I think it's much more effective to just show you uh, a, a demo of our vision. So we uh, published this demo online back in February last year. You can see that this pretty much looks like a normal eLife article. Um, except when you reach some of the figures, uh, you can click this uh, blue arrow button on the top left and that exposes the code behind that particular bar graph. And so for, what you can further do is modify this code in browser. So here's, that's what I'm doing here now. Um, I have a dislike for bar plots. So I'm trying to change that R code so that it becomes a dot plot. Uh, so, and then you can re-execute this with a very simple short uh, cut and then you see that it's being changed into a dot plot in browser. When we released this demo, we got a lot of positive feedback. The community, research community was extremely excited. Uh, people emailed us asking if we could publish their papers as reproducible documents. And, you know, we really want to do that. But to be able to do that, we need to build a stack of tools. Um, tools that will allow researchers to easily compose uh, these manuscripts with code and data embedded. Tools that will host these articles and set up the reproducible execution environment needed to allow the live re-execution that you just saw. And tools for us and any other publishers to accept and publish these uh, executable articles at scale. It's also worth mentioning here that we uh, always strive to develop error in accordance to these three core principles. We are committed to working in the open. Um, all of our tools are created openly. The code base is on GitHub. Um, we aim to communicate and update the community on our developmental progress and milestones and to co actively collect feedback and foster collaborations. We also understand that the research and tech ecosystems uh, evolve very quickly. So it's important that the tools we create are interoperable and future proof so that the infrastructure can be efficiently maintained and users don't have to constantly switch and learn new tools. 
Finally, by building in the open and keeping our tools modular, we hope that other innovators in the community can build on top of the work that we've done. In the last sort of year after the demo, we've really been focused on providing and enhancing the author's experience of composing an error. At this point, we're about to launch the project publicly and invite our authors to publish error complements with their regular research articles. And so I'm hoping to share some of those workflows and features here. Um, the first bit that, that I want to talk about is very uh, exciting development from Stencilla. It in particular tackles this use case where I think it's a very common problem uh, that could, would resonate with a lot of researchers. So you could author your manuscript and do all your experiments, analysis in the Jupyter or any other sort of reproducible notebooks. Your PI requests this a, a flat, so a Microsoft Word version for reading and journals then you know, process all these documents uh, into XML so that they could be uh, discovered in, in the, and indexed. And so what Stencilla has done is really to push the boundaries in terms of um, interoperability between different formats. Um, Encoder is what they've created, is a converter that allows uh, looseless conversion between common research article formats. So you can try this out for yourself in the link shown on the screen here. But now I'm gonna try and do a demo. So what you see here is a Jupyter notebook that is hosted on GitHub. So what I can do with Stencilla Hub and Encoder is I can copy this URL to this Jupyter notebook. This is the user interface of uh, Stencilla Hub. And also, you know, when you use that link that I, I showed you before in the slide, copy this here open it, just have to wait for a bit as encoder runs. So um, this may look a bit confusing, but let's just uh, select a theme. So let's say I want to uh, publish this Jupyter notebook in eLife, sounds very exciting. Um, and then I cl cl click this create preprint. Um, you can see that this Jupyter notebook has been styled in the eLife theme. When I inspect this article with uh, the Google structured data testing tool, you will see that uh, the author is tagged correctly um, and uh, the publishers, oh, there's still a couple of bugs here, but um, so the, the metadata tagging has been largely preserved. Um, so that's what's allowing the looseless conversion between the different research art, common research article formats like Jupyter Notebook, R Markdown, um, even Google Doc. So I mentioned that our goal here is to get our authors to submit errors to us so that we can publish them. This is, of course, still extra work uh, for researchers and they're very busy. So we need to make sure that the workflow is as simple as possible, that they can do it with the tools that they're already familiar or working with. So here's an overview of the author's workflow. The first step is to use Encoder, which I've just demonstrated to convert uh, the published eLife article into a notebook format with Stencilla Hub and to download that and add those code chunks back into the article locally. And then once the, the code chunks are edited and saved, um, the notebook can be uploaded back into the Stencilla Hub project along with the necessary tabular data files. And that's basically it. You could create a snapshot um, and then share that with the eLife production team and we will take care of the rest. So this should, you know, if your code is already ready or in already in some form of a notebook or on GitHub, that really shouldn't take you that long to complete. I'll now show you a demo of how that's actually gonna be done in real life. So let's say I'm the author of this eLife article. Um, you can see that uh, there is one figure here. Um, the graphs are generated by code. So what I would do is I would go to Stencilla Hub, um, create an account, open a new project. It's all quite intuitive and there will be a wizard to guide you through. So this is my project. Um, I've worked on it for a bit already. So you can see um, the files, it's taken a while. So what I would do is um, actually copy the URL of this, of my article. Uh, when I press link here, URL, uh, paste that, and it would automatically link the article in. 
and you would be able to see that that's the link article with the eLife uh, logo. And so from here, you'll be able to convert this to a format that you're familiar with. So here um, I click other um, and I can convert that into an R Markdown file. Um, let's put BCC after it so we can recognize the file. Let's click save. And then Coda is doing that conversion at the moment to take the eLife XML format, converting it into an R Markdown file. So um, that's saved. And you can see the file here, downloading that. So here you can see that I've opened up the R Markdown file that we've downloaded from uh, Stencilla Hub in R Studio. Um, you can see that the uh, metadata, especially around the authors, have been uh, beautifully preserved from the eLife XML. Um, and uh, what I want to do here is to find the right part of the article. So I'll have to scroll through all of this um, to uh, add the code chunk that uh, generated that figure that we saw before. So here it is, figure two. two. Um, so what I can do is I can add a code chunk here. Um, and then uh, I've also got the code from, from the paper. Uh, the authors have kindly put their notebook up on GitHub. So that made it very easy. Um, so I'm just gonna copy uh, I think this bit which generates the simulated data and then uh, the next part that generated the uh, graphs and so let me just copy that over and I should be able to run this um, chunk and um, be able to get the graphs that uh, the authors had. So I've now finished running here and you can see that the code does generate the graphs that you saw in, on, in the paper before. So what I can do now is to save this and just upload it back to Stenzilla Hub. So you can see that this, was, this file was updated about a second ago. What you can do now is to uh, pre actually preview this and to see what we've generated. So here is the preview um, of that R Markdown. Um, the styling is not quite eLife style yet because these, this is the Stenzilla theme that is used in the preview. And uh, what you can see is that that metadata, even after our editing, is still preserved. And um, the uh, authors is up, up on top and the citations are still correct. And uh, if you scroll down, um, the original uh, flat figure is still there because I didn't delete that from the um, file, the R Markdown file, but you can also see the code chunk that I've added. At the time of the recording, Stencilla is still working on implementing the execution backend for this preview. So uh, unfortunately, I can't really ex execute it here um, to show you the output, but presumably it would just be the same as what you saw in RStudio before. What you can now do is then to snapshot files um, and then if you go to snapshots you would now be able to see that snapshot all of our readers who'd like to download this um, article this executable research article so they'd be able to download a zip file so with our, our markdown file and the data files that are necessary to re-execute that analysis um, you could also what you could also do is then share um, with members of uh, the eLife team who can collaborate with you on this project and um, publish this article. So I hope you like what you saw. We are very excited about all of this and we that's why we're sharing it here. Regarding sort of what's coming next, we have quite a few ideas from uh, having presented at various conferences throughout the last two years and also um, talk to various people in the community but we definitely would love your thoughts so if you are uh, a researcher or a developer um, working for example with metadata we'd love to hear from you um, there's a link here where you can sign up for updates for error that you can receive the latest uh, news on the work that we'll, we're doing and of course um, I'm reachable via e Sorry, I'm reachable via email. Thank you very much and um, happy to take questions.